In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Good evening. Good evening. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the sixth Sunday in ordinary time of the year. As we join the Lord in his healing mercy, the Lord heals us and restores us to the community of God's love, to share the love of God among the people. In this Mass, let's pray for all those who are sick and those who need healing in every way. Let us also pray for people that are looking after them, taking care of them at home and in the hospitals. Especially we pray for those who have terminal illnesses, those who look forward to miracle, to be healed, that God's mercy will come upon them. We pray for people who are troubled in one way or the other, people who are ostracized and cast away from the community, especially because of anything that is not their fault. Let us pray for people who are marginalized, like the leper we would see in the Bible, the readings today. We pray for our nation, and we pray for everyone in difficulty. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. In this Mass too, we pray for Barbara Jean Luz. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. But Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who teach us 
that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare. He shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean since it is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offenses, whether to the Jews or the Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefits, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. Oh, it is A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, if you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean then warning him strangely, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that all you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed that will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in the desert, in the deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, you have symptoms. You go get tested. You find out you're positive. You get quarantined. You wait about seven days, you decide to get tested again. You're still positive, you get quarantined again. No, it's not North Carolina rules. It's not Mecklenburg County rules. It's not the CDC rules. That comes back from 5,000 years ago in the book of Leviticus. So if you read the whole chapter 13 and 14, we heard part of chapter 13 today, it's prescribed right there that if you're sick and you're positive, you get quarantined. Nothing has changed. The Gospel of Mark is often brief in recounting events from Jesus' Galilean ministry. Although brief, today's story gives us more in a way of details than most. The leper's actions are dramatic. He kneels, he begs, and he declares Jesus' power to have him clean. Others have reacted to Jesus with amazement, but this man approaches Jesus with faith, and with his kneeling, he expresses his understanding of Jesus' status. Jesus, once again, showed his compassion and power as divine healer. He said to the leper, 
I do will it be made clean. And he was healed. But before he's saying these words, Jesus did something unusual, even unthinkable. Moved with pity, he touched the man. Moved with pity, he touched him. In the sight of the Jewish leaders, it was such a horrible thing to do, to touch a leper. Jesus would be declared unclean and ostracized from his community. He could be accused of violating the law, but he didn't mind. He was moved, he was concerned, he was obedient to the true calling that he had. He touched the man and healed him. His actions impart several important lessons. First, this was an expression of his overwhelming desire to reach out to people, especially those who are in need, the sick, the sinners, the outcasts. The second chapter of Mark says, those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. That he had always been his mission, Jesus' mission, according to the mystery of his incarnation. God became man that he can touch and be one of us, especially in our miseries, our sufferings. With his touch, Jesus touches the leper and heals him. And the leper was healed and can now go back to his family, to his community. Not somebody ostracized, not somebody who is out there an outcast, not somebody who is a living dead. The healing touch of Jesus gave him new life. Now, that's what Mark wants you to remember. Jesus was not moved to show off his powers. He moved by pity and compassion and love. He touched the leper to impart healing in a personal way. It's amazing here. In the middle of nowhere, no reporters, no cameras, no large crowds, Jesus does something that even today we wonder how he did this. He doesn't say, my father, please bless me and help me to make this miracle. The man says, if you wish, make me clean. Jesus doesn't say, I wish, I don't just wish. He says, I will it, and the man is clean. And that's where we step back, and Mark is trying to get us to, to understand who is this man, Jesus? Is he just a prophet? Is he just a good preacher? Is he somebody who hangs around and has people writing articles about him and tell wonderful stories? Nothing like that. Faith. Jesus simply is faith. I do will it. Be made clean. And it happens. The leprosy left the man immediately, and he was made clean. God deals with each one of us on a personal level, on a person-to-person -person basis. There's nothing impersonal with God. That's why Jesus taught us to call him God, Abba, Father. By touching the leper, Jesus risked being contaminated. To fulfill what had been said back in Isaiah, he took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Jesus did this because behind this horrible disfigurement, behind this horrible disease of leprosy, he saw a priceless value of every human person. Jesus wanted to correct the common and belief of the sickness in his divine punishment of sins. In the Old Testament, we hear a lot of stories about those who have been punished because of sin. You may recall the story of Miriam, sister of Moses, who was struck with leprosy as a result of her misconduct, or of that of Job's of afflictions with leprosy like the skin disease. These are all instances in the Bible that made us think and made the Jewish people view sickness as God's punishment for sin. But by touching the leper, Jesus has shown that God is not vengeful, he's not authoritarian, but a loving, merciful father. Sickness no matter how contagious or horrible, is not God's punishment. 
It is just a result of the frailty and limitation of our human condition. And in fact, in Jesus, God has always shown genuine compassion for the sick and the afflicted. But most importantly, the action of Jesus in touching the leper is a serious challenge to all his followers. That includes us. At the Last Supper, he washed the feet of his apostles and said, I have given you a model to follow. So that as I have done for you, you should also do. We encounter lepers in our world today. The elderly, the unborn, the immigrants, the poor, those who have no one to go to. With his action, Jesus is instructing us to reach out to everyone, especially the lost, the last and the least. And in this account, Jesus also hears our own story of pain and touches and heals us as well. He heals our wounds. If we're harboring unforgiveness and resentment, we may need God's touch. We may be stuck in a sin pattern that we don't know what to do and how to face and we avoid bringing it to light in confession. We need Jesus' touch in reconciliation. In our baptism, we are invited by Jesus to become clean. But sin is like leprosy and returns over and over until there is complete cure. The cure, the cure of spiritual leprosy is faith, is faith in Jesus Christ. It's tempting to think that we can handle such things, situations on our own. But we need to recognize that these are things that Jesus can heal. What did Jesus say to the man in this story? He says, I will it, be made clean. He wants to heal us of anything that doesn't reflect his will in our lives. He wills it in us as well. We've all accumulated wounds, scabs on our skins as we go through life. So don't get discouraged like this man with leprosy. Believe that Jesus can heal. He has the will, he has the power, and he heals us for whatever there is. So as we celebrate tomorrow Valentine's Day, a day commonly associated with courtly love, let us remember what greater love is there than this man, Jesus Christ, that we celebrate at Mass each and every time, who God gave us, crucified and risen, right here at the altar. As we each come up every time, receive communion, we have that opportunity to be touched by Jesus Christ. As you receive the Eucharist, that is Jesus touching you and healing you. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. Holy God, the Son of God, and the Father of all our ages. God, the God, the true God, the 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 God,
Amen. It is always the will of God to heal us and to deliver us from our calamities and problems. Let us address our prayers and petitions to Jesus, who is always there whenever we call upon him. Let the church may be an unspoken and compelling, outspoken and compelling witness of the good of human life and the truth of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord In nations where governments oppress and tyrannize their own people, may all who hunger for freedom and justice be satisfied, especially in Myanmar. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For local, national, and world leaders, to respect the sanctity of human life and to provide for the common good of their people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who feel cast out by family or community, may they know that Jesus is always reaching out with his touch towards them when others seem to be turning away. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord On World Day of the Sick this week, And as always, we pray for those who are sick, especially those who are with COVID-19 and those listed in our church bulletin. And for their caregivers, let us pray to the Lord. For all who share in the ministry of this parish community, that they bring compassion and understanding to all who are in need, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, we ask you, and pray that you reach out your healing touch upon us who are traumatized by a lot of problems and challenges in life. Bring your healing into our life and help us to heal others. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. The praise and glory of his name. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by you, may this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, added and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created that the rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of his Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, 
and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the other of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their person from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, our and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. With a vow of reverence, let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Body of Christ.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. This coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Ashes will be blessed and distributed in the following way. Ash Wednesday, February the 17th, at 9 a.m. Mass in English, and at 12 o'clock Ash Wednesday, services of the Liturgy of the Word and dispensing of communion and ashes. All ashes will be distributed from 4.30 to 7.30 in the vestibule. So like I said, we have Mass at 9 a.m., we have service of the Word at noon, and then from 4.30 to 7.30, it's just as people will come in uh, through the vestibule, ashes will be distributed. There will not be a mass at the sisters on Wednesday at 2 o'clock. I also encourage you to pick up the bulletin and the further instructions about guidelines for Lent and about Ash Wednesday. The RCA Rite of Sending will take place at the 11 a.m. Mass next Sunday, February the 21st the first Sunday of Lent, where we'll celebrate the rite of sending for the catechumens and candidates for the recognition by the bishop. Please remember them in your prayers, a special way during this coming week as they prepare to celebrate the beginning of their final stages of preparation for joining us in our Catholic faith. Stations of the Cross, our century's all Lenten devotion, we should all make the effort to attend especially if you've never been before. So every Friday during Lent, we'll be praying the Stations of the Cross beginning at, beginning at 7 p.m. Uh, in years past, we've had the Lenten soup. Unfortunately, this year, we're gonna have to dispense with that. So just Friday evening, 7 p.m., we'll have the Stations of the Cross. Tomorrow, February the 14th, a Vietnamese Mass will be held at 1245. Confessions will begin at 1215. Father Peter Pham will celebrate the Vietnamese Mass. This will be to celebrate the lunar, the uh, Chinese lunar year uh, this coming Sunday. The Knights of Columbus will be selling raffle tickets after mass. Tickets are $5, cash prizes will be awarded to the winners. They will also be selling out of bell car wash gift cards. The cards are $20 and they never expire. The proceeds from these sales go to the benefit of the parish. Part of, uh, when, uh, Ash, I'm sorry, part of Lent is also almsgiving. In the past years, again, we distributed what's called the rice bowls to our students and faith formation. Again, we don't have as many students in the classroom nowadays, most of them are on online. So I have rice bowls available outside where the calendars are at, and we encourage you to pick up a rice bowl and follow the instructions. There's a sheet of instructions inside how to pray on a daily basis uh, during Lent as well as to make a donation to a community that needs it somewhere around the world. So again, I encourage you to pick up one of those boxes and then we collect them on Easter. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the mighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.
Thank you. Thank you.